just about everybody I speak to now is extremely cautious and pessimistic about the metaverse, saying things like, this is terrible, it scares the shit out of me, and Mark Zuckerberg is evil. The other portion is indifferent. The purpose of this video, though, isn't to inform you about how scary or evil or wrong the metaverse and Zuckerberg is. I personally don't care about all that, to be entirely honest. But instead, to discuss the actual expectations, timelines, and benefits associated with the metaverse itself. Before we even begin, though, let's quickly cover what the metaverse is. It's a network of 3D virtual worlds focused on social connection. It's futuristically depicted as a single universal virtual world that is facilitated by the use of virtual and augmented reality headsets. Now this is really important because it's depicted as a single universal virtual world. But it seems like things are going to be a little bit more different, at least for the start. One of the biggest misconceptions that most people have regarding the metaverse is that it will be built and owned solely by Facebook slash Meta. That's very, very wrong. From what it seems at present and from what companies are doing since the initial spike of the trend, the metaverse will consist of numerous metaverses built by numerous companies and every one of them will have its own little intricacies. As of now, the following companies have started building or have pledged to build their own metaverse. So that includes Google, Microsoft, Apple, Valve, and others. Facebook is perfectly positioned to potentially monopolize the metaverse industry solely from a hardware perspective because they do, as a parent company, own the biggest market shareholder of VR headsets out there with Oculus VR. Which does suggest that the shift from Facebook to Meta had been pre-mediated since 2014 when Facebook bought Oculus for an astounding 2 billion US dollars, but that's hardware only. There will be other software metaverses built on top of the hardware. It's like your laptop right now. If you're using Windows with a HP laptop, you can easily install Linux instead. Facebook does have its own version of the metaverse, which it is actively developing at the moment, Horizon Worlds, but it's still in beta and has a long way to go. My point is though, in the future, we will most likely have the ability to choose between metaverses if Facebook or Meta becomes too weird with how they're using information or decides to go for some sort of worldwide domination. The metaverse currently has an entry barrier. You need a VR headset, which will cost you a minimum of 500 bucks as of early 2022. And that's the most basic of entry barriers out there. And no, I'm not talking about the Google Cardboard VR headset. I'm talking about a basic Oculus Quest 2 VR, which comes with the hand thingies. The attachable phone VR headsets are cool and all, but they lack the graphics cards, which only PCs and consoles are capable of for processing AAA rated games and apps. Now, a full set, and I'm talking headset, haptic suit, running pad, etc., can cost anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000 US dollars. My point is, the average cost of these items is gonna have to fall a lot before VR and the metaverse becomes the new normal. And I don't think it'll take very long, but it still is a challenge that needs solving before the metaverse is massively adopted. This cost issue can be partially side-skirted by focusing on augmented reality-based metaverses or hybrids of augmented reality and virtual reality, as most phones can handle AR. And I think Pokemon Go proved that a few years ago quite well. But there's still quite a way to go before we hit any form of mass adoption. As per actual metaverses, there already are a couple of fully functioning ones, and these MVPs of sort can give us a pretty good understanding of the ones to come. The most established one being VR chat. I was about to include Second Life too, but after checking gameplay, I sort of take it back. Decentraland is cool too, but as mentioned in my previous videos on DCL's gameplay, there's still a long way to go. But the point is, if we look at certain particular elements that are native to each game, we can then understand or at least predict some of the future elements to come like jobs for instance. Decentraland, for example, has actual full-time paid positions that players can partake in, like a casino host, for example, for approximately $2,000 per month. Because of this, it's very safe to say that the metaverse as a whole will bring future jobs to the economy. You might be a full-time salesperson in a Nike's virtual NFT shoe shop, 
or a full-time tour guide at a virtual Disney amusement park. This part makes perfect sense. From what we're seeing already from metaverse prototypes out there like VR chat, there will most likely be metaverse relationships, metaverse wars, metaverse bullying, metaverse killing, you name it. The end result of the metaverse will likely be a digital projection of life as we know it or life as we will know it without the physically mortal consequences attached to it. But of course, only time will tell. To just focus on the negatives associated with the metaverse as a trend though just doesn't seem right. I mean, it is normal nonetheless, as people do in most cases react negatively to change or to expected changes, but I personally think as though it will just be a waste of a very good preemptive opportunity to either position ourselves to take advantage of the situation further or at least educate ourselves to navigate it better. Think about the Bitcoin critics you know that now actually own Bitcoin, and trust me, there will definitely be negatives associated with the metaverse. The release of World of Warcraft back in 2004 showed us that people can get addicted to digital products just like they can get addicted to drugs. Both release neurochemicals including dopamine and serotonin. And the metaverse as a trend will most likely 10x this issue as there will be just so much more to get addicted to as the amount of sensory input is to be like nothing we've ever seen before. But that does just seem like another matter of self-control. Conclusively speaking, there's still a long way to go. Even Zuckerberg, who's insanely bullish on the metaverse as a whole, says there's still another 5-10 to 10 years before the metaverse is adopted on a mainstream level. There's a lot of factors that have accelerated trends development, including cryptos, NFTs, DeFi, especially when considering that just about every new gaming IDO out there is creating its own play-to-earn metaverse, but it'll still need more time nonetheless. The end product though will most likely creep into our daily lives just like smartphones did. It'll probably come to a point where we won't even realize that we just held our company's weekly meeting in a little Zoom metaverse just because our boss wanted to make sure we're fully engaged in the meeting. Or that we attended our sibling's wedding ceremony that was just held in the metaverse. But I think there's nothing to be afraid of. We will always have the choice of unplugging. You can do it now and you'll be able to do it in the future. If it's too much, just shut it down.